Hi everyone, I really want to start explaining this IPEC duck movie, but I still have a few more things that I wanted to go over before I can get into it. And so I'm just going to continue where I left off. In my last video, I was talking about how once I understood what the tree of life rep represents and what the firmament represents, I had put those words into a Bible code to see where they come up, and they actually came up in Ezekiel 1. It was right around this area right here. I don't remember exactly where it was. Okay, and as I was reading the context of Ezekiel's vision, what I realized is that what he was seeing, although it may have been literal, I believe it was also a representation of DNA. And so I did some research to see if anyone else had that theory as well. And I actually came up with a really good video. I'll, I'll put that link in the description box. But as you can see from all these images, uh, I'm not the only one who thought that when they read it. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the details about that. I'll just put a link to the video in the description box if you're interested, which explains how this is a representation of DNA. I think especially when you get to verses 22 and 23, it's definitely describing DNA, but this is also where, where the firmament comes up because as I've explained before, the tree of life and the firmament, they also represent where the DNA comes from. And so as I was reading this, and I'll just start from verse 22, it says, And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And this word terrible is actually it doesn't actually mean terrible it i'll go ahead and pull it up it says to fear revere be afraid stand in awe in reverence honor and respect so it's not fearful it's just something to be awed and respected and so this is the crystal and like i said this is where satan gets all of his ideas from just like the cologne commercial i'm not sure what the name of the cologne is but it shows that the crystal satan gets all of his ideas from god is really a representation of what's in the bible okay then it goes on to say and under the firmament where their wings straight the one toward the other everyone had two which covered on this side everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went i heard the noise of the wings like the noise of great waters as the voice of the almighty the voice of speech as the noise of a host when they stood they let down their wings and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads and when they stood and had let down their wings and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne and as the appearance of sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above it or above upon it. Actually doesn't even say upon it, it just says above it. Okay, you can see that there's no word in the Hebrew for upon it, it just says above it. And it's the same way in the Greek. Okay, and then it goes on in verse 27 to say, and I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. And so what I realized from this verse is that the focal point here is the, the loin area because the the color of amber and the fire that was glowing it was coming from the appearance of his loins upward and from the appearance of his loins downward i saw as it were the appearance of fire and it had brightness round about okay and i'm just going to go ahead and go to the next verse and then i'll show you some images but then it goes on to say 
as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Okay, so this is the appearance of the glory of the Lord. I'll try to enlarge this image so you can see what it would look like. You had, okay, that's about as large as I can get it. If you had all the, the wheels and the cherubim that, that were beneath the, the firmament. And then from the loin area, you had this fire that was glowing that was the color of amber. And this was the, the appearance of the, the glory of the Lord, as it says here. Okay, and it's interesting that this is coming up in verses 27 and 28, which, as I've mentioned before, I believe that represents the years 2017 to 2018. But then it goes on in verse 2 to say, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon that thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me, and he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children, and stiff-hearted I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So this right here tells us that there's going to be scorpions and briars and thorns and so I could talk about that later but then it goes on to say in verse 2 7 which again looks like 27 it says and thou shalt speak my words unto them whether whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for they are most rebellious but thou son of man hear what I say unto thee be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. So again, you see this in Ezekiel 2.8, which looks like 2018. And this is the same thing that was coming up in Psalm 81, verse 10, which makes 811 backwards, and Psalm 118 is a representation of 2018. And this is where it said, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So same exact same thing. Okay, and it was in Acts 28, starting with verse 1, that they escaped to the island of Melita, which means honey, as I explained in my last video. But if you go to Revelation 10, 7, where it says that the mystery of God should be finished, I've talked about before. If you go to the very next verse after that, this is where it says in, in verse 8, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So he's given the little book here in Revelation 10, 8, and 9, which again, I believe 10, 8 represents the year 2018. And then he's given the book over here in Ezekiel 2, 8 and 2, 9, which again, I believe this also represents the years 2018. And I, I believe this may not necessarily be the year 2019, because when you get to Psalm 119, and also Psalm 19 is where it talks about honey. I'll show you that in a minute. But especially in Psalm 119, that goes through the entire Hebrew alphabet from the Aleph to the top. So I believe this is a, a representation of eternity, 
Jesus is the, the first and the last, and this is where it begins to go through the entire alphabet. But over here, he's given the book in verse 9, and I want to talk a little bit more about the, the book in a minute. But also want to show you another place where it talks about honey as well, and this was coming up in the April wheat field Pentecost table that I did. This one reads, April Pentecost wheat field ripe, Lord reap soon. And as I've mentioned before, this is the table that comes up where it's talking about the fuller's field. And this was coming up in Isaiah 6, 13 through Isaiah 7, 8. And I'll just show you that. Okay, you can see it goes through 7, 8. Okay, and I've talked about how this is when the Confederacy goes against Israel and God tells Isaiah to meet them at the Fuller's Field. And I've talked about the name of Ahaz and how that means rapture and it's the Strong's number 272 and 270, which again, you have the number 27, 72, which I can talk a little more about. But this is also where God told Ahaz, which again means rapture, to ask for a sign. And, and then Ahaz, he told him to ask for a sign in verse 11. So I make 711 or 117 backwards. And he said to ask for a sign. And then Ahaz said he didn't want to tempt God to ask him a sign. And then God said, Hear ye now, O house of David, it is, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this is the revelate what has been understood to be the Revelation 12 sign. And as you can see, it makes the numbers 777 because... 7 plus 7 is 14. And of course, that occurred in the year 2017. And then over here it says, Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. So again, this is the restoration here. This is the, the birth of the man-child, the birth of Emmanuel, which is Jesus. But I believe it also represents the, the man-child. And he's saying that when he eats the honey, the butter and honey, and this word butter means curdled milk. So it's basically milk and honey. So when he eats the, the milk and the honey, he will know to refuse the evil and choose the good because this refers to the, the restoration of the, the DNA. And so the the two witnesses, the bride, will automatically know to choose good rather than evil because it will be written in the DNA. Okay, so now I want to talk about the little book. It actually says the role of a book, which is a Megillah, and I'll show you an image of that, but I also want to show you the word in the Greek. It's this word right here, which is Okay, this is a form of the word head. It's Strong's number 2777, which I've talked about before. It's actually 2776 is the Strong's number for the word head. Okay, and you can see that in Luke 2017 when it talks about the head of, a, of the corner. That's Strong's number 2776. And then if you go to the next Strong's number, it's 2777, which is the diminutive for head. Okay, you can see that here, but it also refers to the tips or knobs of the wooden rod around which parchments were rolled were called by this word because they resembled little heads. Okay, so I'll just show you an image of what that would look like, and I'll also show you an image of a Megillah, which was the word in the Hebrew. Okay, so this is the little book that Ezekiel was supposed to eat starting in Ezekiel 2.8 where God told Ezekiel to open his mouth. And this is a parallel to Revelation 10, verses 8 and 9. And, of 
course, this occurs right before Revelation 11, where it talks about the two witnesses. But I'm about out of time, so I'll have to continue in the next.